Hey, welcome back guys. In the previous video, we talked a little bit about splitting pizza amongst our friends using some special operators. In this video, we're gonna continue that discussion by increasing and decreasing our count of pizza slices. Now, in the previous video, I left off basically asking, do you think it's appropriate to put pineapple on pizza? And I'm hoping that has intrigued some interesting thoughts and discussions, but I just wanted to ask that you guys put your differences aside and just get along for this one video so we can continue our discussion and not have to worry about fighting. Speaking of pineapple on pizza, check out our sponsor Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a boot camp for people who do love pineapple on pizza as well as those who don't. So we can all go there, learn how to be really good developers and get a job in the industry. So Dev Mountain is really going to help you learn the JavaScript environment for web development. They have courses in person and online. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. They're pretty serious and a lot of people have a lot of success. So check them out. Let them know I sent you. They'll give you $250 off and then you can send that money my way to help me buy um, a new pair of really ridiculously priced headphones I want that my wife won't let me get. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously. And enough blabbering. Let's just dive into more operators. So anytime you want to change the value of a variable, we can reassign it. So we could say slices of pizza equals 11, for example. We only have to use let or var one time, and then after that we can just reassign it using the name. And this is okay, but sometimes we don't want to just give it a concrete value, we want to give it a value relative to the value it already has. So, for example, we could say, hey, assign a value one more than the value it already has. So if you wanted to do something like that, you basically have to use the variable and reassign it back to itself. So something like this, slices of pizza plus one. This is going to work the same way. This side gets evaluated to 11, and then that's reassigned back into slices of pizza. So now slices of pizza is gonna be 11. And look at that, I wasn't lying. This works and all, but psh, this is like ridiculous amount of typing. You have to type the variable like twice. And you know, as developers, we can't waste that kind of finger power. No, that sounds so weird. <laughs> and as developers, we just cannot be wasting time rewriting variable names. So they have a shorthand way to do this, and that is to say slices of pizza plus plus. So I could take this and replace that previous statement right here. And now what happens when we do a refresh, we still get the value 11. There's also a decrement version. So we could say slices of pizza minus minus, and we get 10 again. So we increase it one, then we decrease it by one. These are known as the postfix increment and decrement operators. Postfix means that it comes after the variable. There's also a prefix version. So let's get rid of these. I'll show you the prefix version now. Plus plus slices of pizza. Very similar, and it gets the same result 11 because we just increased slices of pizza by one. You will see both versions in code. Generally, I like to put them after the variable. I think that's what most people do. You might be wondering what in the world the difference is if they do the same thing. Well, there is a slight difference, and you can see that if you want to, say, reassign this back to a variable. So let's say we have a new variable, new pizza, and we're going to set this to slices of pizza plus plus. And on our console log, let's make this a little bit more organized. So we're gonna print slices of pizza like that, and then we're going to print new pizza here. And I don't think we need this space here. I think it'll automatically put a space for us when we use a comma. So now let's do a refresh. So the first one, slices of pizza is 11. So slices of pizza does get incremented, but new pizza is only 10. So that means new pizza is getting the original value. So the increment is happening after the assignment. So when we get to this line, what happens is slices of pizza gets assigned to new pizza, and then we increment the value of slices of pizza. If we put the pluses on the other side, well then the pluses happen first. So this gets changed to 11, and then we assign 11 back to new pizza. So this will give us both 11. This really isn't that important because you're really not gonna see this a whole lot. And honestly, I just don't really like the code when something like this happens, because even if you're a seasoned pro, it's really easy to mess this up and it's hard to remember which way happens. So I recommend if you're, if you're really wanting to do something like this, just break it out into more statements and make your life a whole lot easier. So this shorthand of the plus plus and the minus minus gives us a real easy way to increment our values by one. But what if we wanted to increment it by 20 or you know multiply it by five? Well, we could always just write that out manually. So like, let's say we wanted to multiply our pizza. We could say slices of pizza equals slices of pizza times five. And this will give us the value 50. So now we have 50 pieces of pizza, but once again, we have to write that variable name out and that's no fun. So the shorthand way to do this is to delete this and put that multiplication symbol on the left side of that equal sign. Right there, oh yes. 
I could go for some 50 slices of pizza right now. So all of the arithmetic operators can be used this way. That means you could always do a plus equals, a minus equals, a multiplication equals, a divide equals, and even a modulus, oh, even a modulus equals. Sorry, I messed up my typing there. So that means if we use a value like four here, this will give us the value two and slices of pizza will have two. That's because four goes into 10 twice with two left over. This is a useful tool if you want to do something like count by a certain number. For example, you might use the increment if you want to count by one, but if you wanted to count by two, you could use plus equals two and not have to increment twice. Or if you wanted to count by 10, you could do this. Once we get into loops, you'll see this a lot more because you'll often see some kind of increment inside of the loop condition, but we're gonna get into that. Right now you just need to know how this works and be able to apply it to some examples. Hopefully I didn't get your cravings too high for pizza. I know the struggle is real when you really want something and it's not around, but I think you can get through it. And I really encourage you to check out the next video because we're gonna be talking about number methods. Not the ones we've already talked about. We're gonna be talking about some new ones. Specifically, I think we're gonna get into parse int, which is a really cool method that you need to check out. So thanks guys, check out the next video, subscribe, and check out our sponsor. Peace out.